Hey everyone, welcome to Coach Cruz. I'm your host, Brad, and anyway, today we're obviously going to be talking about the Carnival Horizon. All the things that I love about the ship, what I'm looking forward to is that will be my next cruise coming up in just 40 days from now. So uh, let's start talking about it right after this. I just can't get away from a good time. everybody so let's talk about the first thing that I'm looking forward to and that is the Havana area now the Havana area is accessible to everyone at least the indoor portion of the Havana area okay now there is an indoor bar in the Havana area there's also ample seating and in the evenings they have live music Latin themed music um, and Latin themed drinks and I mean you can get traditional drinks as well from the Havana bar but you'll, you'll see a Latin flair to it, right? Now, if you pay, uh, I would say it's usually pretty significant upcharge, you can get a room in the Havana area. And what that gives you access to is the outdoor pool and a couple hot tubs. Now, if you don't um, purchase you know, a room in the Havana area, they won't allow you back there, uh, which if you do have a room, like I say, it's nice because you're gonna find that that pool is far less crowded and some of the other pools on the ship. You also have your own private bar and uh, people that stay in that area, you know, obviously tend to, to go to that pool as opposed to the others, um, just because it's it's so much less crowded and they get to know people back there. So it, it's something to look forward to. So that is definitely something I'm looking forward to as we're staying in that area. But again, everybody has access to the Havana area, just not that outdoor section. Okay, so let's talk about something else I'm looking forward to. Now, this will be relevant to only people that are traveling at the time that this particular cruise director is going, right? So in April though, Cookie. Um, Cookie is one of the most widely talked about cruise directors within the Carnival fleet. And somehow, some way, he's eluded me. Despite all the cruises that I've taken, and, and yeah, I'm a diamond level cruiser. So that means I've cruised at least 200 days at sea. I'm about 250 right now, but somehow, some way I've never gotten cookie. And I just keep hearing how great he is. Now I've been with some great ones, two notable ones. My, my favorite male cruise director currently is Lee Mason. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be tough to top Lee. I mean, Lee is just out of this world. Obviously got cruise director of the year is the inaugural cruise director of the Carnival Celebration. And Kendall Fire is my favorite uh, female cruise director. And, and she's really close um, with Lee in terms of, you know, who do I like more? But um, I got to side with Lee, but Kendall is really close. And there's a lot of discussion about Kendall possibly being awarded the Carnival Jubilee that's coming out. But one of the other names that's really being talked about along with Kendall is one Mr. Cookie. Um, so I'm really excited to hear everything that he's about and, and, and watch him do his thing. And uh, I'm sure he's going to be very entertaining. So I'm looking forward to that. So if you have Cookie as your cruise director, that might be something you look forward to and, and definitely check him out and see what he's all about. Okay, next, I'm going to talk about some specialty dining. Now, again, this is an extra charge. So if you are on a budget, and I understand, you know, there are certain families out there that, hey, I mean, this cruise costs enough. We don't have the extra money to spend on this kind of stuff. I totally get it. So you can just fast forward this little section uh, real quick. But there are three specialty dining venues that I'm going to enjoy along with my wife on this particular cruise. The first one is going to be the Steakhouse, Fahrenheit 555 Steakhouse. Um, it's $45 or $48. I should know that. I'll put it up on the screen there. Um, and anyway, you get your choice of just I mean, a variety of different steaks. Um, you know, there's a New York strip, there's a spice ribeye, uh, you can get a surf and turf. There's some uh, lamb chops are an option. There's an extensive menu of entrees that you can choose from that are all pretty delicious. I tend to go with the spiced ribeye myself, medium rare, it's awesome. And uh, they have some a la carte items too that are included within that cost. Dessert is also included. They have a fabulous cheesecake. So it is an evening that you will just 
thoroughly enjoy. Now, I'm from Chicago, and if we go to a steakhouse comparably, comparable to one that Carnival, the quality of um, a la carte items and steaks that Carnival gives you, I would say it would cost us minimum double, minimum double for everything that you get in a Carnival Steakhouse experience. So that is something we always do at least one time on the cruise, and we'll be doing it the first night on this particular cruise. Now, something that's special to Carnival Horizon is the Banzai Teppanyaki. Now, the newer ships, the Mardi Gras, the Celebration, um, the Panorama, they all have the Banzai Teppanyaki, but uh, you know, you have to be on one of the newer ships on Horizon. This happens to be one of the newer ships that has a bonsai teppanyaki. Now, uh, they have um, separate seating, you know, so they have two dining times in the evening, I believe, um, and it seats, I want to say, eight people at a station. But it ba basically is one of those uh, eating venues where you have an individual chef and he's cooking for eight to 12 people, something like that and you all just sit there and watch him cook up your dinner right in front of you, and he does some tricks and flips the knife up in the air, and all those kind of things, and, and then serves you a, a fabulous meal on top of it. So we're going to enjoy that. Finally, this is an eight-day cruise, so three days we're really treating ourselves. But the biggest treat, and we don't do this every cruise because it is pricey. It's roughly $100 per person, right? But it's called the Chef's Table, and it is a dining experience okay um you're gonna get met met by the chef out in the atrium lobby and then they're gonna give you some champagne and talk to you for a little bit and then they're gonna walk the the group of about 12 because i think 12 is the capacity of the chef's table and they're gonna take you back and they're gonna give you a series of appetizers appetizers every single one of them that i remember at least are absolutely fabulous and now these aren't any items that you can get, for example, um, in the main dining room. This is like, well, to give you an example, uh, there was some foodies that have been on the chef's tables with us before. And one said, you know, they were taken to a five-star restaurant as, you know, a special <laughs> treat on their birthday. And they said that the chef's table was better than the five-star restaurant you know, the, the quality of food and, and how good it was. So that said a lot to me. Um, and in, you know, like I said, we've been on a number of chefs table, but it's, it's like a seven or nine course meal. I don't know. I mean, with all the appetizers and all the different, uh, you know, food they give you, you walk out of there absolutely stuffed and the food is phenomenal. It's, it's a dining experience. Like I say, they even have a magician come in there and do some magic trips, magic tricks. Uh, the chef, tells you about each course and and how you should eat it and how it's prepared and everything that goes into it and it's it's really a remarkable experience so um if you want to indulge if you want to treat yourself the chef's table might be something worth looking into for you okay now next let's talk about the serenity deck now this definitely is free and accessible to everybody except kids under 21, right? <laughs> so if you are younger than 21, you don't have access to the Serenity Deck. But for everybody, especially those parents out there that want a little peace and quiet and relaxation from the kiddos, you can escape to the Serenity Deck. The good thing about the Serenity Deck is it has a variety of options in the shade and in the sun. So if you want to lounge in the sun, there are plenty of sun loungers. But if you want to escape to some shade and read a book or whatever, or take a nap, there are plenty of shady areas for you to go to as well. In addition, there are a couple hot tubs. And in the daytime on sea days, they have the salad creations bar where you can create a uh, delicious salad of your own along with a bar. And they usually have wait staff going around taking drink orders. So you don't even have to get off your lounger. So that is an area that a lot of people really, really like. And uh, there's a good chance you might like that area too. So you'll have to check it out. Next tip I have is to check out the bars. There's one bar in particular though that I want you to check out. If you're a drinker, if you like Bloody Marys, 
I don't think you'll be able to beat the guys, pig and anchor, Bloody Mary. Um, I can tell you it is infused with veggies. So they have this giant container and you can see it right when you walk in the bar. And there's layer upon layer of different veggies in this container. It's a see-through container and then they pour over the top of that gallons and gallons of Tito's vodka. That's the base. So when you get your Bloody Mary made, you know, they're pouring the vodka right out, you know, infused with all those veggies. That's the base of your Bloody Mary. So it's it's absolutely brilliant. And then of course they're putting, you know, celery and olives and all the other kind of goodies that go into a Bloody Mary. And then they top it off with like five pieces of bacon. It's crazy. It's absolutely wonderful. So if you are into Bloody Marys, you definitely want to check out Guy's Pig and Anchor. And then there are plenty of other bars too. I mentioned the Havana Bar earlier, um, Cuban iced tea at the Havana Bar. There's a bar in the Ocean Plaza, uh, Skybox Bar on level four. If you have a sporting event that you want to see, the, there's a good chance you'll be able to catch it there. Um, up on the Lido deck, you have, of course, the Red Frog Rum Bar. You have the Blue Iguana Tequila Bar. I love the Blues Patron Margarita. Um, that's an excellent choice. You have the Tides Bar at the back of the ship. If you want to look at the wake with a drink in your hand, that's a great place to do it. You have the Serenity, the Serenity Deck Bar, the Atrium Bar Lobby. Um, you have the Piano Club Bar. So, I mean, there are so many places. If you are a drinker, you're going to have some great choices in terms of what you drink and uh, where you can drink it at. The Steakhouse Watermelon Martini. Another great choice for you out there. All right, so since we're on the topic of bars, let me just say my favorite bar is the Alchemy Bar. If you are new to Carnival, okay, the Alchemy Bar makes up a number of specialty drinks, and every one of their drinks has like three to four ingredients, uh, in some cases more. And they take a little while to make because so much goes into them. So you see each of your alchemists handcrafting each of these drinks. And if you're in a hurry for a drink, that might not be the place to go for you. But if you're just in, you know, you don't have uh, anywhere to go for a few minutes and, and you just want to see an, ex an exceptional bartender make an exceptional drink for you, then the Alchemy Bar is definitely a spot that you want to check out. Uh, they have a variety of different drinks on the menu, but one thing that's unique about Alchemy is if you don't see anything on the menu that sounds great, which, uh, you know, I think that's going to be hard to do, but if you don't, you can say, hey, you know, I want something that has a little of this, a little of that, and, you know, whatever. Can you do something? They will make you a drink that is unique to what you asked for, and uh, it will probably amaze you. So the Alchemy Bar is my favorite bar to this day throughout the Carnival fleet. Alchemy Bar is definitely one to check out. They do not serve beer there though. It is more of a martini bar. So if you're looking for beer or pop or you know something like that that you might get at a traditional bar, don't go there because um, they'll politely tell you you know that they don't serve that there and uh, they'll turn you away. It's, it's not really a wine bar either. Although they do have some sparkling varieties like Prosecco and things like that that they mix with some drinks. So uh, depending, you could find that. All right, something else that I'm really looking forward to. Those of you going on the Carnival Horizon, the Playlist Productions, they have three shows that are absolutely fabulous. Now, I go on a lot of Carnival cruises, but there, when I'm on the Carnival Horizon, there are three shows that I never miss. One is Soulbound. Okay, now Soulbound is a spooky kind of thriller themed, you know, uh, show where they, they have the singers and dancers dressed up and I guess you could say spooky like costumes. And I won't give too much of the plot away, but you know, they, they play music with a lot of soul, uh, if that helps you out a little bit. And there are a lot of cover songs and, and of course that they play. And it's just a really good show um, with some really good special effects. And I think you'll really enjoy it. Now, the next show that I'm very fond of is Vintage Pop. So what they do with that is they go and it's like a 20s themed show where they're dressed up in all the, the cool 20, roaring 20s themed outfits and such. And they're singing different songs, but 
with a 20s flair to them. And uh, it, it's really a great production. My favorite part of that production, there's a scene where it's a sultry type of scene where it, it looks like, uh, um, you know, a young lady has a gigantic feathery red dress. It's really just a bunch of people holding up feathers and it looks like the bottom part of her dress and she starts singing and then all of a sudden she gets to a certain point in the song and, and the feathers all open up and she does a little sultry walk down to some stairs and you know continues the song or whatever and the rest of the dancers jump into it but it's it's a really really cool look uh, the way they do the lighting and everything so i think that is something that you would really enjoy so don't miss that show if you're going on the carnival horizon but the final show you absolutely cannot miss this one celestial strings this is one that you absolutely if you have not seen celestial strings do not miss it um you know i have friends that are huge comedy fans you know, I mean, you might be a huge comedy fan and the stand-up comedy is often very good on Carnival or whatever, but on whatever night they have comedy, if it conflicts with Celestial Strings, do not go to comedy over Celestial Strings, okay? Especially if you haven't seen it, even if you're not a theater person. Trust me, give it a chance. I think that you're going to watch Celestial Strings and just be like, wow, okay. Yeah, I'm not usually into theater, but that was pretty good. Um, I won't even tell you too much about Celestial Strings. I will tell you, there's a lot of white in it. They're, they're wearing a lot of white costumes. Uh, but the music, the, the dancing, the, the emotion, and, and it seems like the dancers and, and the artists that perform in Celestial Strings, it seems like they just give a little bit more uh, than they do other productions because it just comes across as, as so great almost every time. So go check out Celestial Strings. Now, since we're on the topic of entertainment, live music, you will not be able to get enough live music. Everywhere you go, there's going to be live music. Of course, on the Lido deck in the daytimes, you're going to have some live music going on there. But if you go down to deck five, okay, let's start in the back of the ship. you got Havana Bar, and they're going to have a lot of Latin music, you know, instruments just going crazy you know, singing, people dancing to salsa, everything. It's going to be great. In the Ocean Plaza, they're going to have a live band most evenings, okay? And they're going to be going to town there too. And Guys, Pig and Anchor, just down the hall, they're going to have, you know, uh, some performers there singing. You know, it, it's, it just never ends. If you go down into the atrium lobby, you're going to find somebody performing there. Sometimes it might be the violin trio. Uh, sometimes it might be a band. I don't know, but they're going to have somebody performing. Obviously, in the you know the Liquid Lounge, they're going to have performances as well. But there is music almost everywhere on the ship, uh, so you will not run out of places to go. You will, chances are you're going to find somebody that you really love listening to on a daily basis, and maybe you listen to the same person over and over throughout the cruise because you love them so much, and then you might decide that you want to change it up. Maybe uh, one day you want to hear some cover songs and you really like the band, but then the next you might get a little bit more culture and uh, go, go listen to the violinists perform. And they're usually very, very good. So live music, really looking forward to that. And I think you will too when you go. All right. So now I mentioned briefly the Punchliner Comedy Club earlier. Now comedy, I mean, we all know if we're on land, we want to go see some comedy. It's going to cost us money. You don't get free comedy. It's included in your cruise fare. You can go see all the stand-up comedy you can watch, assuming you're 18 and over for the R-rated shows, but they have family-friendly comedy shows as well. So even the kiddos can get in to watch the comedy shows, uh, just not the 18 and over ones, obviously. So um, comedy, if that's your thing, you can check that out as well. Now let's start getting into food. And we're talking about the free food now. I talked about some of the specialty dining things that cost money earlier. Now let me say this, the main dining room, that is free to everybody. I don't know if some new cruisers realize that, but the main dining room does not cost extra. If you are a new cruiser, make sure you go to the main dining room at least a couple times. Now some people prefer to go to 
the buffet because they feel like they don't have to dress up. They can go in swim trunks and a tank top and that's how they're comfortable and, and get some pretty good food from the Lido buffet. Now, if you go to the main dining room, they do have some dress restrictions. It's not bad though. I mean, most nights you can go very casual. You can go in a, a t-shirt and some khaki shorts and you know, a pair of tennis shoes and they're not gonna say a thing. Um, there are a couple nights on the cruise though that is considered the formal night where they would like you to dress up and you know, wear casual attire sometimes or you can get really dressy, which you see people do as well. Some people go so far as to, to put on an elegant dress and, uh, and a tuxedo, and that's perfectly fine. Some other people might just put on a collared shirt and some khaki pants and call it a day. Uh, but the, those two nights, they do expect that you dress up a little bit. Um, not everybody does, but that's their expectation at least. Now on those nights, what's good about those is one of those nights, if it's a six night cruise or later, one of the two um, elegant nights and it's usually now going to be the second elegant night on most cruises is they will serve you lobster for free. Now it used to be you could order as many lobster tails as you could eat. Now they've gone to charging an additional five dollars for a third entree. Um, one thing they're not charging for, a couple things they're not charging you for though, is appetizers. So you can eat all the appetizers that you can put down and you can eat all the desserts that you can put down. But as far as entrees go, um, usually on the night that they have lobster, prime rib might be an offering as well. So you can do the surf and turf. You could say, hey, I want the prime rib and I want the lobster, no extra charge. But if you say, hey, I want three lobster tails, they're gonna charge you an extra five bucks. You know, the first two are free and the third one is obviously gonna be $5. Now, sea day brunch, that is also free to you. Now, there's usually a pretty long line. So let's say you plan on going on at 10 a.m. Make sure on your Hub app, that's a downloadable app, and you should download that, by the way, before you get on your cruise. Um, but download that app, and then you can put how many people in your party are going to be attending Sea Day Brunch. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's a 20, 30-minute wait or longer. But when your wait is over, you'll get a notification on your phone saying, hey, your table's ready, come on down. You just click the button saying, I'm on my way. You show it to the hostess or the host at the uh, front of the restaurant and they will get you seated. So it's easy, just uh, just do that. You see, often see people going down there and they think they're gonna be able to just walk right in and there'll be a large group of people waiting in the, you know, in the elevator bank area, just, just trying to get in on the table. So uh, you can avoid that by, like I say, uh, putting in your request for a table and then they just notify you on your phone when it's ready. So some other free food items. And again, for you veteran carnival cruisers, you know a lot about this other stuff, right? Okay, but let me just remind you, free guys burgers. That is some of the most talked about burgers at sea, especially considering they're free. You can eat as many guys burgers as you can put down on a cruise. They'll just, you want two burgers, they'll give you two burgers. You want, you know, three burger patties with fries, they'll give you three burger patties. You go up there, they're gonna take care of you. Excellent. Okay, now just across from them on the other side, is the Blue Iguana Cantina. Now there, in the morning, you can get breakfast burritos, okay? You can also, in the lunchtime, you can have, say, a taco salad. You can have tacos. You can have regular burritos. All right, now I will tell you right now, I was just came off the Carnival Breeze around New Year's Eve, and um, I went and I got four of the best tacos I have ever eaten, okay? Load those suckers up. They have a topping bar that you know you can put anything you want on your tacos pretty much that you can think would go on a taco. They have it at the uh, toppings bar for, for your tacos, right? And a number of different hot sauces, a number of different salsas. They've got your sour cream. They've got you covered. So you can make some of the most delicious tacos. And you know they don't limit you to just you know one type of meat. Like for example, I had fish, I had shrimp, I had beef. They have pork, okay? All those options for your tacos. 
And then, like I say, you can get burritos or a taco salad or something like that if you want as well. Um, at lunchtime, Gigi's becomes the Mongolian walk and they will make you a stir fried uh, meal, you know, for lunch with noodles and, you know, a choice of meats and veggies that you can put in there. And you can have that for free. Cucina, Cucina de Capitano. It is at cost in the evenings, but for lunch, you can get a variety of different pastas for free. Okay, so if, if pasta is your thing and you don't want to pay for it, pay that charge in the evening for lunch, you can go get it for free. Now, obviously, the offerings aren't going to be as extensive, but if pasta is what you're looking for and you want some kind of Italian or you want some kind of Asian, then you can go to those venues for free. Now, the deli is always free. They have a variety of hot sandwiches and cold sandwiches that you can choose from. They also have some cookies and fries. Now, one thing that is at a cost that I did not mention earlier, this is not for free, but the Seafood Shack, um, I'm just mentioning that now really quickly because that, those seafood lovers out there, now almost all the seafood, it is all the seafood, is at a cost. You can't get anything there that's for free. They do have stuff that's very affordable though, like almost every cruise, I think every cruise, I've gotten a bowl of the clam chowder and it's only about $5. Um, it, is, it is only $5. So if you like clam chowder, you get a, a bowl of clam chowder in a bread bowl even, and uh, that's delicious. They have peel and eat shrimp, I think at an affordable price that you can dip, dip in butter, and that's delicious. Now just across from there is the Pizza Pirate. And for all but about six hours of the day, I think they're open till either two or 3 a.m. And then they open again at about 10 a.m. But um, you can get pizza. They make a variety of different pizzas. Obviously you got your pepperoni, um, you got prosciutto, uh, you have cheese. I mean, there's a variety of different toppings that you can choose from, from to have put on your pizza. And that is free. You can also have it delivered to your room for a fee. I believe the fee is $5 still, uh, but you can take, take care of that. Of course, you have the Lido Marketplace Buffet where they have a variety of different offerings and those are all free as well. So that's the number of free food. If you're on the Serenity deck, the salad bar is free. Uh, so there are plenty of free food options for you to enjoy while you're on the Carnival Horizon. And you can take advantage of as many of those as you want. Um, a couple of specialty venues that I didn't mention, Bonsai Sushi. I know I mentioned Bonsai Teppanyaki. Bonsai Sushi has rolls and they can range in price from anywhere from five five dollars and higher um, i think eight dollars is the cost of their highest priced roll and that is the bang bang roll which is very good okay so um, if sushi is your thing they have some noodle uh, soups and things like that that you can order as well and they have you know um, some specials for example you can get a, a sushi boat where they have um, a number of rolls and, and a variety of things and I think that's like $24, but it serves two people and they give you a generous amount of uh, sushi. So you can check that out. That is about all I have for you as far as the Carnival Horizon goes and the things that you can look forward to on the Carnival Horizon. So I hope some of the things I mentioned are like, oh yeah, I got to do that. Um, and uh, you take advantage of that. But those are some of the things that I'm looking forward to. And in eight days, it's going to be hard to kind of get all of that in, right? But uh, again, hopefully I gave you a couple things that you hadn't thought about that you're going to use and take advantage of. And um, I hope to see you on the ship. As a matter of fact, you're, if you're on the April 1st, 2023 cruise, I'll see you there. Look for me. We'll see a lot of people wearing these Coach Cruise shirts. I'm hosting a Coach Cruise bar crawl. So um, yeah, check us out. All right, and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, at least hit the like button, but we hope you hit the subscribe button and we're also available on Facebook. Um, so you can check us out there. We're on TikTok, we're on Instagram, we're on all that good stuff. So um, we hope you become part of the Coach Cruise family, but if not, uh, have a great cruise on the Carnival Horizon and we'll see you on the ship. Take care. Good job. Oh, sure. Um, and secondly, and this one is huge, like and subscribe. <laughs> Ring that notification bell so you know when this man is posting more videos. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> that you so much. You're welcome. Thank man. you, Lee. I just can't get away from a good time.